Hypernatremia is a potentially life-threatening electrolyte imbalance that places clients at risk for brain damage, secondary to brain cell injury and intracranial hemorrhage. Risk of injury is compounded by the risk for fluid volume deficit that commonly accompanies this disorder. By definition, a client with a serum sodium level higher than 145 milliequivalents per liter has hypernatremia. As the sodium level in the bloodstream rises, the solute concentration, or osmolality, of the bloodstream also rises. Hyperosmolality of the bloodstream is commonly caused by an overall deficit in total body water. Hyperosmolality causes fluid to move from the intracellular compartment through semipermeable membranes into the intravascular compartment. This fluid shift is referred to as osmosis. During osmosis, fluid moves towards the compartment where the solute concentration is greatest until the solute is dispersed equally. The brain's response to hyperosmolar states in the bloodstream is profound. When clients become hypernatremic, fluid moves out of the brain cells into the extracellular fluid compartment, causing the cells to shrink and become dehydrated. This brain cell shrinkage pulls the brain tissue away from the dome of the skull. The shifting motion traumatizes small blood vessels surrounding the affected brain tissue, causing intracranial hemorrhage. The impact of brain cell shrinkage and dehydration, combined with intracranial bleeding, causes a critical deterioration in cognitive abilities and places these clients at great risk for injury. Additionally, there is often a concurrent fluid volume deficit problem along with the neurological deterioration. What are the most common causes of hypernatremia? Hypernatremia can result from inadequate fluid intake. The client either has an inadequate thirst mechanism, as is commonly observed in elderly clients, or is unable to respond to an existing intact thirst mechanism. This phenomenon is observed in clients who cannot communicate their needs or are physically incapable of meeting their own needs. Hypernatremia can result from water loss. The water loss can be ongoing and insensible, such as from rapid breathing, diaphoresis, and fever, or water losses can have a renal origin. Renal water losses result from treatments like diuretic therapy or abnormal developments such as solute diuresis as is seen with hyperglycemia. Hypernatremia can result from abnormal hormone secretion such as decreased pituitary secretion of antidiuretic hormone or ADH as occurs with diabetes insipidus. Too little ADH diminishes water reabsorption from the collecting tubules of the kidneys and dramatically increases urine output without sodium loss. Hypersecretion of adrenal cortical hormones such as cortisol, as occurs with Cushing syndrome, and aldosterone, that would be Kahn's syndrome, also increases serum sodium levels. Excessive cortisol and aldosterone causes sodium retention. While not as common, Hypernatremia can also result from over-ingestion of dietary sodium, excess intravenous sodium, and certain medications. The risk factors for hypernatremia are advanced age, due to the diminished thirst response of elderly clients, infancy, because infants can't always communicate their needs clearly, and they have greater insensible water losses, tachypnea, fever, and diaphoresis, all of which cause insensible water losses, fluid volume deficit related to burn injury from third spacing losses, diabetes insipidus due to decreased ADH secretion, osmotic diuresis, as in the solute diuresis common with diabetes mellitus, diuretic therapy, or water diuresis, excessive ingestion of over-the-counter medicines such as Alka-Seltzer and N-acids, as these increase sodium intake, Cushing syndrome due to increased cortisol, hyperaldosteronism due to increased aldosterone, and some types of drug therapy, for example with lithium, because it inhibits ADH. Signs and symptoms of hypernatremia are directly related to the cellular changes associated with elevated serum sodium and fluid volume deficit. It is important to examine symptoms from both an early and late perspective. Typically, early signs and symptoms are general and could indicate many different problems. That is why risk factor identification is so important with all of these syndromes. Late symptoms are often very specific and serious. Signs and symptoms of hypernatremia are thirst, 
dry mucous membranes, fever, lethargy, confusion, irritability, weight loss, generalized weakness, tachycardia, orthostatic hypotension, oliguria, and seizures. The diagnosis of hypernatremia is based on the serum sodium level and the clinical presentation. Management of hypernatremia requires extreme caution and vigilance. Acute hypernatremia with an onset over a period of 48 hours can be corrected with free water orally or an IV infusion of 5% dextrose in water or D5W over a 24-hour period. Chronic hypernatremia must be treated slower and with great care. Rapid fluid replacement can lead to cellular swelling, cerebral edema, and increased intracranial pressure. If the client has signs and symptoms of fluid volume deficit, such as tachycardia, hypotension, and tachypnea, isotonic sodium chloride solutions should be administered IV until vital signs are stable. When vitals are stable, the solution can be changed to D5W. Diuretics, such as hydrochlorothiazide, trade name hydrodiuryl, inhibit the reabsorption of sodium in the distal tubules, resulting in excretion of sodium. Vasopressin and ADH analogs, like desmopressin, trade name DDAVP, increase the reabsorption of water by the kidneys. How can you help prevent hypernatremia? Here are some helpful measures. Provide clients with access to water and monitor intake for those who have impaired thirst mechanisms or an impaired ability to request water. Monitor clients who have diabetes mellitus closely for serum glucose control. Assess for dietary excesses of sodium. Teach the client to read food and over-the-counter drug labels and avoid products that are excessively high in sodium. Monitor serum sodium level, body weight, and intake and output daily. Modify the plan of care to address coexisting risk factors for hypernatremia. Assess and document a comprehensive neurovascular assessment so that early hypernatremia can be recognized and treated. Hypernatremia is a potentially life-threatening disorder that causes many problems that can be difficult to identify and treat. The clinical presentation of this disorder is insidious. Therefore, it takes vigilant and consistent use of the nursing process to identify early clinical manifestations and initiate early interventions.